Hey, Ruan here from Tunnel Vision TV, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys and girls how to create a rocket engine inside of Blender. So let's get started. So I've got a new project open. I'm going to delete everything AX and just confirm that. And first of all, we need a emitter and we also need a domain. So I'm going to create the emitter first. So press uh, Shift A, Mesh, and we're going to select a circle for the emitter. And then we're going to go into edit mode, press tab, and then 2 to select the edges. Make sure you select all of them by pressing A, right click, and then go new face from edges. New face from edges, yeah. So that will basically just create a new face between those edges, just like that. And we're going to rotate this, um, so I'm going to press R, Y, and then 90 degrees. So we're going to shoot out flames and smoke from the one side of this emitter. So that's why I'm rotating it like this. Next, we need a domain as well. So I'm going to press Shift A, create a cube, and go into side view or front view, scale it up. And I'm going to scale this on the X axis. So S, X, and just scale it like that. And then I'm going to bring up the side menu by pressing N. And I'm going to make the length of this domain uh, 60 meters, like that. And I'm going to set the Y and Z to about 20 meters. Well, let's set it to 20. So you can see the length is now 60 meters and the height and the width or the depth is 20 meters. Cool. So now we can close the side menu. And with this cube selected or this rectangle, let's go to our physics properties and click on fluid. And let's set this as the domain. All right, so there's the domain. And then we're going to select our emitter here in the middle. We're also going to click on fluid and let's set this as flow. And uh, let's just set up the scene a little bit nicer before we start changing any of these settings. So I'm going to take the domain and I'm going to move it over to the side because I want more space on this side because we're going to shoot fire and smoke in, the, in that direction. So we don't want anything on this side really. So you can see that's our emitter and it's kind of on the edge or close to the edge of the domain. All right, let's just save that. And what we can do now is on the emitter, let's start with the emitter settings first. So select your emitter, go to your physics properties and let's see what we can change here. So first of all, flow type, let's set this to fire and smoke because we want fire and smoke. And then if we leave this on geometry, if you press play, you'll see Nothing's really going to happen because I just want to reset the simulation. Every time you change something, you have to click on the domain and just change the resolution. And that's going to update the simulation. So if we leave this on geometry and if I press space to play it, you'll see that it's just going to kind of do like a initial flame and it's going to disappear because it's only going to use it's only going to emit once from the geometry. So I want to change this to inflow. So it kind of does it constantly. And uh, let's see what that does. So if I just change the resolution again on the domain, we can press play. And you can see now it's constantly emitting fire and smoke, not just like a once off thing. OK, so let's see what other settings we can change on the emitter. So click on the emitter and let's scroll down to flow source. And this is where you can set the distance from the actual surface of the mesh where the particles will be emitted from. So currently it's set to 1.5, so that's quite a bit far out. So I'm going to change this to 0.5 just to bring it closer to that mesh. And then we also want to give it a initial velocity. So it's actually shooting out particles in this direction, in this X direction. So here at the bottom, we've got initial velocity, tick that. And then because I want to shoot it this way, that's on the X axis in the positive direction. I'm going to increase the X amount to about 60 meters per second. So that means it's going to shoot the particles over the length of our domain and it's going to take about a second to get here. So to preview that, let's quickly reset our simulation. So click the domain, change the resolution and make sure you're on frame one, press space.
Okay, you can just press space to stop that again. And as you can see, we've got some something going that way, but it's not looking great. So let's just set up our frame duration or frame range. Um, here above the timeline, I'm going to set this end to 100. And then under the domain settings, so just click on the domain to select it. If you go down to your cache, just set the end frame to 100 as well. So you can set that to any duration you want. And uh, next what we want, we want some more force going um, in the X direction. So an easy way to do that is to add a wind force. So I'm going to press Shift A and then go to force field and then wind. And I'm going to scale it up. Scaling it up is only for the viewport. So it doesn't do anything. It won't affect the actual wind. So I'm going to place it kind of here behind the... Uh, domain and then I'm going to rotate it so I'm going to press R Y and then 90 to just rotate it so it's kind of pointing in the same direction so with our wind selected under the physics properties I'm going to increase the strength of the wind to around a hundred now we've got some nice strong wind going that way as well all right so let's give it a test so I'm going to click on the domain reset the resolution and then press space to preview that from frame one. And now you can see we have something that kind of maybe looks like a jet engine. Obviously the resolution is super low, so let's fix that. So there are a few more settings that we can set on the emitter. So let's just go back here quickly and see what we can do to make this better. So first of all, we've got our sampling substeps. Now sampling substeps is basically telling Blender to calculate frames in between the frames. So if you have a really fast moving simulation like this one, you want to add extra frame or frame calculations between each frame, if that makes sense. So I'm going to increase this to around five. So it's going to try and kind of do five calculations between each frame. I think that's how it works. So it's going to give you better results, but it might take a little bit longer to actually run the simulation. So next we've got our density and fuel. So I'm going to increase the density, that's for the smoke, to around f uh, 3. And I'm going to increase the fuel to 3 as well. Because we want dense smoke and we want lots of fire and flames. I'm not going to set or not going to change the initial temperature for now. There's so many settings here, but I'm just going to show you guys the basics. So if we scroll down you'll see we've already changed the surface emission and we've got the initial velocity and that's all good. So let's just reset our domain resolution, press space and see what we get. All right, so now you can see we've got dense smoke and we've got dense fire uh, because of all the fuel, so that's looking good. So let's increase the resolution to around 64, so it looks a little better. And let's see what we can change on the domain. So select the domain, increase the resolution right here and let's see what we can change so first of all we've got the adaptive domain if you enable this this will calculate the domain size um, according to the simulation size so it will automatically increase up to the size that we've set and this will make your simulation run a lot quicker so that's a good thing to 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 have Next, we're going to increase or add some noise. So tick noise. And there's some settings that we can change here. So the uprest factor, that will increase the resolution, which is nice. So we're going to leave it on two for now. The strength, we only want a small amount of noise. So we're going to set this to 0.1. The scale of the noise, that's kind of how big the wave of the noise will be. We also want it really small. So I'm going to set this to 0.1 as well. And then the time, that's how quickly the noise wave is kind of moving so the smaller this number the faster the noise will be if that makes sense so i'm going to set this to one because i want kind of not too fast noise um yeah let's see what we get i'm just going to increase or change the resolution again to reset everything go to frame one press space and let's see what happens okay i'm just going to stop it here at around 50 things are not looking bad obviously the resolution is still quite low but let's just have a look i'm just going to play this back quickly you can see we've got a nice kind of cloud mushroom cloud being shot out from the emitter and um, yeah everything is looking pretty cool you can obviously increase the domain a bit because you can see it's cutting off the edges of the kind of mushroom cloud for the smoke 
But yeah, um, that is all up to you how big you want to make the domain. So next what we can do is we can increase the resolution even more. So currently it's on 66. I'm going to increase it to around, let's make it 100 for now. It's still very low res, but we'll be able to see things a bit better. So with that set to 100, make sure on frame one, save your project. And I'm going to press space and just fast forward through this because it's going to take a little bit longer to simulate. All right, so that simulation uh, took a few minutes to finish. As you can see, it's obviously still very low resolution, but let's quickly see how we can set up the material for our simulation before we bake our final high resolution render. So I'm gonna select the box or the uh, domain and then go to shading. And this is where we're gonna set up our material on the domain. So let's go over to render view and I'm also going to switch over to cycles. And then first of all, I'm going to go to the world settings and just decrease the strength of this gray background to zero. So it's all black. And then I'm going to add a sun. So just shift a um, light sun and let's just give this some strength. Let's increase it to about four. And let's see if we play this back, if we see anything. We're not going to see anything because we don't have any materials. So make sure you select the domain, click new material, and let's see how we can set up our material quickly. So I'm going to delete the principal BSDF shader, and then I'm going to create a new shader. Just search for volume, and I'm going to select the volume principal or the principal volume shader. So all you do is you connect the volume to the volume and instantly we should see our smoke. All right, so here we can increase the density of the smoke. As you can see there, it's much denser. So let's leave this on one for now. So to bring our flames or to add the flames, an easy way to do this is to add a add shader node, put that here. And then we're gonna create an emission node. Let's connect this here and everything is just gonna emit. So now we need to get the flame information and use that as the strength for our emission. So I'm going to create a new node and I'm going to search for volume info like so. And I'm going to connect the flame to the strength of our emission. And now you can see we actually get something that looks like the flame. So now what we can do is we can add a color ramp. And this is to control the strength of our flame, like where you want it, if you want it everywhere, like so, etc. And another thing that we can do is we can add a math node, place it after our color ramp, and let's change this to multiply. And this will help you to control the strength of that emission. Okay. And then obviously you can change the color here. So let's make this maybe, I don't know, maybe blue like so let's set this to like a hundred nice and bright something like that and then you can also play around with the settings um, here on the principal volume we can change the color of the smoke if you want to make it darker you can do that um, you can also connect the color from here to the smoke and then we can add a color ramp in here to just adjust that value of the actual smoke. Let's increase the density of the smoke to maybe around five. Let's see how that looks. Another thing that you can play with is the black body intensity. So if I increase this maybe to something like 20, you'll see that we will get some actual fire, like the actual red and orange. You can also increase the temperature here of this black body intensity. So if I set this to something like 3000, you'll see that our flames will look a lot brighter and hotter. So I'm going to leave this on around 2000 for now. I think that looks pretty cool. Okay, so this is basically our final um, material or shader set up for our smoke and fire. As I mentioned, this is just a very basic way of setting it up. Um, there are many different ways that you can set this up. So play around with these settings and see what you get. All right, so once you're happy with your material, let's go back to the layout and let's increase the resolution once more and let's do our final bake. 
so let's select the domain let's go back to our physics properties and let's increase the resolution to around 200 for now we can always increase this if it's not enough but 200 might be okay for now so all we're going to do is we're going to scroll down until we get to cache and this is where we're going to bake the cache for the simulation so we've already set up the frame range starting at one ending at frame 100 and then i'm going to change the type to all because i want to cache everything at once the smoke the fire etc and you can also enable is resumable so you can kind of stop it halfway through and then resume again but i'm not really going to worry about that now because i'm going to just bake everything at once save your project and then you simply click on bake all and i'm just going to fast forward through this because this might take a little moment all right so as you can see it's starting to do the bake um you won't be able to see anything in the f in the viewport while it's baking so just give it a few minutes come back and see if it's done and i'm just going to fast forward through this quickly and that's how easy it is to create a rocket engine simulation inside of blender i hope you guys enjoyed this quick tutorial please consider subscribing if you enjoy tutorials like this and you can also check out my blender book that's coming out soon details in the description and yeah, have a nice day. See you guys next time. Cheers, bye.